What's going on, everybody? Um, today, this was a heavy one, and I wanted to talk to you and bring awareness to you. One of my uh, one of the things that I love to do is just bring awareness to you guys, get you guys to think a lot different, to understand what might be going on and things that you might not understand what's going on. So today's topic, I want to talk to you about cognitive dissonance. Have you guys heard of cognitive dissonance? Anybody heard of cognitive dissonance? Um, yesterday, I was listening to a, um, I, was, I was just scrolling. I have time blocks of scrolling, but intentional scrolling intentional scrolling and it came across a, an artist and this artist was talking about cognitive dissonance and he released this podcast and he was talking about how he would know well let me let me get to let me get you clear on what cognitive dissonance is if you never heard this this word before it's uh i like to call it and keep it really simple is like the duality of the mind where you're having conflicted thoughts your your thoughts your your actions and your beliefs are not in alignment to the things that you know and you hold as truth and that's really what cognitive dissonance is it's like you know better but you're not doing better because of whatever whatever thing is getting brought to the surface and so i was doing some research here so i came across this rapper let me give a few examples his name is D1 Music, and he it was actually his last post, and he talked about this, and it was really fascinating. He would say, like, he knows that when he would be, like, singing or rapping or creating these lyrics that his words were creating weren't aligning to the things that he was saying. And a lot of times when we're singing things or we're, we're, we're um, speaking things out into existence, it doesn't nece necessarily resonate with what the things that we can feel as truth. And when I was looking this up, so let me give you the exact definition, because I did spend some time looking this up so I could, yeah, fire, fire, fire. Um, so cognitive dissonance, let me give you the exact definition. It is, hold on, I have like a lot of notes that I want to share with you guys. Um, you, okay, no, this is an example. Cognitive dissonance is the unpleasant emotions that result from holding two contradictory beliefs, attitudes, or behaviors at the same time. So it's almost like this duality of like, you know that you want to change, but you're still living in a past expression of yourself. You know, like, it's like, it's like, once you know better, you're not doing better. It's, it's like when people say, I know what to do, I'm just not doing it. There's a confliction, there's a dissonance, there's a gap. There's this gap between where you want to be. So I'm like, okay, now we understand what the problem is. If we understand like there's a separation, there's a division amongst self. And when I, when I say and when I talk to you guys about like getting on your own winning team, I'm talking about getting your mind, getting your heart, getting your spirit, getting your energy, getting your body, like all in alignment. There is no separation. There, there is no tearing apart. There is no distancing. It's all a connection. So this, that's really what I mean about becoming your greatest asset versus becoming your greatest liability. And in the appropriate psychological terms, it's called um, cognitive dissonance. So the, the opposite of cognitive dissonance is cognitive consonance. So it's like, okay, cool. I learned this new word today, cognitive consonants. What does this mean? Surprisingly, there's so much information on cognitive dissonance because think about it. We understand what the problem is and we try to dig so deep into the problem. So what's the solution? And the solution was cognitive consonants. So cognitive consonants is really, this came about by Leon... Festinger in 1950 means a state of mind in which the person's conscious knowledge, attitudes, and awareness are congruent and in harmony, in harmony with their unconscious, emotional, and innate beliefs. It's a, it's an intertwining. It's an emerging. It's a getting on your own winning team, becoming your greatest asset. That's what cognitive consonance is, and and here they state. Ways of doing that is mindfulness, challenging your current beliefs, considering the importance of the dissonant thoughts, like where are these thoughts coming from? That's why our, the journaling, the meditation, the exercise, the pillars of human performance are so critical 
to show up for every single day because it brings you more connected and merging and alignment to the core of yourself. And years ago, um, when was this? Six years ago, I picked up this book. No, it was it was only, maybe it was a little bit. No, this book I picked up a long time ago, but I started talking about it publicly six years ago. So I started learning and studying a lot on the metaphysical stuff and the power of belief and the power of epigenetics and all this stuff like in my early 20s. And when I started talking about it publicly here and there, it was more when I was speaking about music. I was listening to music online and then I was realizing what I was singing wasn't in alignment to what I believed. And that's what that musician was talking about uh, D1 music. He was saying like, you know, I'm not I'm not in alignment to uh, cheating or being promiscuous or, you know, uh, uh, money being my God or this, this and this. But yet here I am affirming it. Here I am singing it because I love the beat. So I'll go and memorize it and then I'll go ahead and regurgitate it. And how many times in our day are you watching? Are you intentionally watching television that creates that dissonance within the time, not valuing your time, not valuing your energy, that creates that division where you're singing music and you're listening to things that creates that division. And so when I started talking about this book publicly and I started talking about how I was being very intentional and selective and I was creating awareness for other people six years ago about like even listening to music and it kind of sounded silly like, oh, whatever, it's just music, but your words are a law and what you speak out should also be in alignment to what you believe within. And these are the little, little things that lead to the big things. And every single day, we have to really take as if it counts and as if it matters. And that those little things do lead to the bigger things. And so that was when I first said that about six years ago, I shared one of those books too. This is is like a a very basic book on epigenetics. And epigenetics is the power of shape-shifting your belief system on a cellular level, on a cellular level of shape-shifting your belief system. So that was one of the first books I I started talking about publicly um, six years ago. And I had that live stream video I was talking about. I was driving, I was listening to music. I'm like, you know what? Enough. I'm now intentionally going to be singing music and sometimes with salsa, I don't know what they're talking about. That's why I like it because it's got a beat. They're playing the instruments. Like it's upbeat. It's lively. But then when I realized when I when I was in my single phases and I'm in a single phase now in the practice of celibacy, how when I was listening to bachata music or other types of music would start activating like sexual um, tension, right? And a lot of us don't talk about that, but the power of that is really tapping in and strengthening your energy field when you practice that space of the deeper connection of celibacy. And these are a lot of things that I'm going to start talking about more publicly and the power behind it of really reclaiming your personal power. Um, and there's a lot of more people that are starting to publicly start to start to talk about this stuff. And it really is all about that connection of cognitive um, consonants which is the word that we're really going to focus in on today. So the opposite of cognitive dissonance, the separation of self, that gap is cognitive consonants. Consonance is just like learning how to merge and become your greatest asset to be, to really like become your MVP player of your team, of your mind, of your body, of your spirit, of your soul, of all these amazing things. It, it also, there's a story too where, they talk about the story of two wolves. I don't know if any of you have heard that story of the story of two wolves where you have a wolf. There was a Cherokee Indian chief and he was talking to his grandson and he was telling him about this battle that was going on between greatness and evil, the greatness and evil. And there's this battle going on in this, this fighting and what happened was there the battle of like jealousy and envy and hatred and dishonesty and pride and ego and, and greed. And then you have this light and this like joy and happiness and peace and kindness and compassion and empathy. And every day the battle is going on every day. The battle is going on. And then he stops and the grandson, the grandson says, grandpa, who won? 
And the grandpa paused for a second and he said, the wolf you feed. And the whole point of the story is every single day, there's a, there's um, things in life that are being placed. And it's important that we start as everybody to start paying attention a lot more because people are not okay right now. And whatever you're going through, I'm sure there's things that are getting brought to the surface, whether you are dealing with it or you're not dealing with it. And these conversations are important because it really is the little things every single day that you can add to your life or that you pretend that you don't need or it's not that important right now and you'll get to it later that are going to bring you, that are going to merge that gap, that separation from who you're showing up as versus who you truly are. And it's those little things that bring you a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer until you merge into the highest expression of yourself. And it is a daily practice. It's not fancy. It's not glamorous. I showed that in my reels the other day. It's just showing up for it. It's about making it a non-negotiable and it's creating that merging of all segments of self all segments of self so that you can live from whatever wolf you want to feed. But every single day, it's a practice. And it kind of gets back to this example as well as another example I explained to my clients where every single day, um, we can practice what also creates that cognitive dissonance is every day, maybe um, you're practicing the problem. So if the problem is the cognitive dissonance, I just more and I don't know why I keep telling people that because it was an identity and now you're in an identity shift and congratulations. So this is a new beginning and a new chapter for you. And the point of this is like, that's the story of two wolves. And it's also what I'm telling you right here is this is the focus of red. So every single day, you can be focusing on the problem. You can be focusing on what's not serving you. You can be focusing on the things that are tearing you down and breaking you apart. Or you can understand that that was an experience and it's not an alignment. It's not that cognizance. It's not that, that unity, that harmony, the harmony. And now you focus on blue. So if I say, you know what, Jose, I think I said that right. Sorry. You know, Jose, um, what you're, what you're putting your energy and your time and your emotional space into, um, is not in alignment to where you're going in this next chapter of your life. And you can't unlearn an experience, but you can shape shift where you're putting your time and your energy into. And so now I want you to focus on the blue. And the blue is alignment and harmony to where and who you want to be today. What I learned working with Dr. Joe Dispenza was what I realized three years ago was that I was living in a space of the gap. And a lot of times when we're in this space and we're doing all this personal growth and development and we're learning all this stuff, we're still, it's almost like we're in this gap phase, this dissonance phase. And we haven't learned how to merge it together to, to pull and to become our future self. And what I mean by this, a lot of people, especially in entrepreneur space, will call this the, um, what do they call it? They call it. Uh, the imposter syndrome, you feel like an imposter, because you're you're stepping in a, into a new identity. And it's unfamiliar territory, and it doesn't feel normal and doesn't feel right. And it's like an adjustment phase. But how I explain it to my clients, and also when I'm practicing leveling up and stepping into my higher self and the next chapter of life and the next season of life, is you're learning to become a new character. And personality traits don't have to continue to move with you for your future self unless you've chosen to consistently carry your past into your future, into your present future reality. 
And so every single day is a practice of the merging of the becoming, the harmonizing, that cognitive cognizance, that harmony, that unity of lining up to that person today. And every day is practice. And And you're going to be wobbly, you're going to suck at it, you're going to be shaky, you're going to fall until you're able to stand on two feet. Think of it as like a baby. Babies crawls, they start like trying to stand all shaky. When they shake, then they like try to walk a little bit, then they fall and they get back up. And you have to treat every single stage and every single level like you would as a new beginning as a stepping into, as a becoming, and the practice of it until you get the hang of it into the adjustment, but every single day you practice that space of the becoming. And uh, what else did I want to talk to you about, guys about what you say? I don't know why I feel bad even though. Well, that's just a space. I mean, any type of transitional space should never be done alone. And that's where you need to seek out professional help. You know, like anytime you're going through a huge transitional space, if an ending, an ending of any form of, of a space, it requires uh, you to seek out professional help. Nobody, anybody that's highly heightenedly successful in something doesn't do it alone. You know, coaches have coaches, people have um, performance coaches or therapy or life coaches um, and any form of that stuff. So I do, I do um, recommend that you get professional help um, and get somebody, some strong people as part of your lineup. I like to call it like teammates. Who's going to be part of your winning team to help you get back up in moments where you're feeling weak and you need that support and you need people that are capable of being strong enough to get you back up so that you can operate as a highest expression of yourself and maybe get to meet that person for the first time in your life. You know, a lot of us have never even met that person before. We've never even merged with the highest expression of ourself before. And we use relationships as crutches to, to um, avoid ourself. You know, so there's, there's so much depth in this and it does go back to the space of that cognitive dissonance and that, the understanding of cognitive, uh, cognitive connaissance, um, and really the merging in the, in the harmony, kind of like a song. Like if you hear a song for the first time, you're like, your cells are like, Oh no, no. Like, like the voice is amazing. The lyrics are amazing, but them together just does not, there's not like a harmony. Or if you hear like a singer and like, there's a frequency and a harmony and a tonality with the beat And there's like, it's like they belong together. That's the journey of what life is designed to be, but with yourself. And then you find people once you meet yourself for the first time, which should always be priority of that self-care, that merging of the mind, body, soul. And then you meet other people that line up and create that harmony where you have a collaboration of people where you are all in harmony, where there's that together. Um, Yeah, I definitely would say seek out support and find a strong lineup um, because it's not a division. The division starts with you. You know, and everything is an external expression of self and taking personal responsibility and knowing that you need to heal, you heal your heart, you heal your mind, you heal your energy field. And we'll definitely be praying for you on your journey. So, um, but don't let that, that heart in your heart, never, the strongest people in the world are the people that are able to keep their heart open under all circumstances. Mm -hmm. Those are the strongest people in the world. And to stay kind and compassionate to themselves, first and foremost, and also to others, because everything is an external expression. It's a mere reflection of you and the deeper things that need to be worked on.
So I'll definitely keep you in my prayers and please seek out uh, people that can support you on in this next season of your life. Cause it's a season. Okay. So have compassion and grace for yourself. Um, all right. So today's topic, like I mentioned was cognitive dissonance. People were really talking about that. It's, it's a new word that more even artists are starting to speak about. And there's a lot more awareness as far as that goes and being mindful of the music that you're speaking and the words that you're putting out into the world and being more mindful on what you're saying and making sure that your words, that your voice is used as a filtration system between your mind and your heart, that it becomes a tool, an instrument to create harmony and unity with everyone else out there in the world. So please make sure that you take responsibility for that because it is meant and designed to be a gift and it is designed to be an instrument. But what we also receive and we hear and we listen to intentionally with our music, our television, our social media also needs to be a space of discernment and what we're allowing into ourselves and into our body and making sure that it creates that cognitive consonance versus a cognitive dissonance, that gap. And what I was saying earlier about when I was doing work with Dr. Joe Dispenza three years ago is what I realized, and this happens a lot to people and a lot of entrepreneurs call this the, um, uh, what's it called? I just said the word. Uh, the imposter syndrome, the imposter syndrome is just an adjustment season. You guys, the imposter syndrome is an adjustment season and think of it as like, you're a character and you're learning to, um, you're an actor, an actress, and you're learning how to play a new character. You're shape-shifting your personality. You're shape-shifting your belief system. You're shape-shifting the way that you uh, your daily habits, your daily methods of operation, your all these things, and you're in the space of the becoming. And you get clear on who that is, and you start to practice every single day what it's like to be that person until you adjust it as your new normal. That's the key. Yeah, so that's today's topic. That's what I wanted to share with you. I was feeling like an itch to get it out. And I'm like, ah, I don't know how, how to say it, but to just say it. So I hope today's message really resonated with you. I hope you understood the truth with it. What I found really interesting about um, looking up this stuff was that there was a lot on the problem and not enough direction on the solution. And because like I'm a pro at what I do and I can say that confidently, I really am a pro at what I do. So I know what to look up. I know what words to find. I know what I'm looking for. Um, and I want to always give you guys the background and the facts and some stories with it. But if you are trying to seek out solutions and answers on that, creating that harmony between the mind, body, uh, the emotional state, and the spirit, it's really overwhelming, really, really, really overwhelming. And even the things that they were saying in here, there was not much on this, even though it was, even though they started, they discovered the term cognitive consonance in 1950. Why is the internet not have, so, they have so many things on the problem, but not enough on the solution. And it's because more people are doing research and facts on the problem than they are on the solution. And so today I want to encourage you to start to um, be honest about whatever it is that you, you feel like there's a distance that's creating a distance between you operating as a highest expression of yourself. Be honest about it. Become aware about it. And then seek out solutions. So once you're aware of it, you don't need to keep going down the rabbit hole. That's what creates more dissonance. Once you're clear on what is creating that gap between who you are and where you want to be, start seeking out the solutions. Spend your time and your energy and your precious 
time and energy and focus on the solutions from here on out and then practice becoming what you, who you got to become in order to create that harmony and that merging with yourself. All right, you guys, I love you. Thank you for staying on for this long and hearing what I have to say. I haven't done these live streams in a little bit, but I love them. And uh, I just feel really called to have deeper conversations with you. I don't think that people were ready for these conversations like publicly, but now I don't care. I'm just going to start having them because uh, it's truth. And I'm really passionate about the truth and really passionate about sharing with you guys. So, yeah. Yes, education leads to self-awareness and self-acceptance and then ideally change. All right, you guys, I love you. I love you. Thank you so much. Please go do some good things for yourself. Focus on the solution. Be honest about the problem. Have awareness around the problem. And then put the rest of your time, energy, and focus on the solution. All right? Practice, practice, practice until you become good at it, until you become great at it, until it becomes your lifestyle. If you guys need any more help, if you have any questions, and if you have never had a one-on-one -on -one strategy call with me, you can find it in my link in my bio to schedule a 30-minute strategy call and uh, point in the right direction if you want to get into some coaching, if you want an a la carte course, or if you want to get into our inner circle. All right, you guys, love you. Have a blessed up Saturday. And today's, today's not, sorry, there's a dissonance. I hope you have a, a blessed up Monday. And, uh, and I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys later.